What's up guys, my name's Seth, you're watching Petro360. Today you're gonna see how I turn a filing cabinet into a pretty awesome toolbox. So storage is always gonna be an issue no matter what garage you have. You have to make the most of your space. Now, toolboxes are a great place to store things like wrenches and screwdrivers, pliers, hand tools, things like that, but you run into issues whenever you're trying to find places to store things like grinders, polishers, sanders, shop towels, things like that. You need a place for them to live, and that's where we found that actually filing cabinets make really good homes for these larger items. So. This is my current setup. This is a really old um, four drawer filing cabinet that I actually got when I bought the house. This unit is pretty old and the paint is absolutely flaking off, but it serves its perfect really well. I can fit quite a bit of stuff in here, but I'm actually running out of room. So in here, I keep things like consumables, shop towels, zip ties. We also keep sanders grinders, all the accessories, consumables for those items. So we store a lot of stuff in here, but lately I've been running out of room and I actually got lucky and found a much larger filing cabinet. And here it is. This is the filing cabinet that I ended up with. Now, obviously it didn't come exactly like that. And so that's where most of this video is gonna take place. Now obviously, some of you may not know that filing cabinets make great storage for all of your tools with tons and tons of room for larger items and they can handle quite a bit of weight because you gotta remember, you gotta think about how heavy all the paper will be inside of this thing and you have to be able to open and close it pretty easily. So these make for great options and I decided to go a little extra because my dad gave me the idea and the incentive and I decided to make it look like an actual toolbox. So let's go back a couple weeks when I got this thing and uh, see how we got to where we're at now. So this is the filing cabinet that I actually ended up with. Now, if you're looking for a deal, beggars can't be choosers, but this is actually perfect. Um, it is huge, um, it's super wide, and it was brand spanking new. So I ended up uh, from a friend finding this thing. It was bought, put in an office building, and they said that it never had any papers put into it. But if you look around on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace, you can find these things for pretty cheap, way cheaper than any toolbox or storage solution um, that's off the shelf. So people are usually just trying to get rid of these things. Now with everybody going digital, they don't need to store massive amounts of paper. So for this unit, it has actually both styles of drawers that I've seen. Um, this top drawer has a front shelf that folds it out of the way, and then it slides out here. So this is, makes it much easier to get at your tools and everything. And I like this because um, my dad's is actually set up like this. And when I'm working, I just leave all these open so I can reach in and grab them. So all these other drawers are actual standard drawers, which I'm not sure if I like or not yet. We'll find out. But the important thing is, is this has a locking mechanism. So if one drawer is open, no other drawers can open to make sure that this thing doesn't tip over. So as you can see, the actual inside of these drawers is a textured finish. Um, they're nice and deep. They even came with these dividers. Um, that I can set up to have different areas for different tools and everything. Thankfully those are included. Um, it does have the ability to be locked, but I don't have the key, so if I really wanted to, I'm sure I could probably find that or make something else work, but I'm not super worried about that here. And the overall finish of the cabinet is really, really nice. Um, again, it's brand new, but it simply doesn't match anything. So that's the main part of this video, is to make this filing cabinet into a toolbox. And so the first step in the process is a lick of paint. Alright, so that knocks up round one. Um, I went ahead and hit this entire cabinet with 220 grit paper all the way around um, just to scuff it up 
to give the paint something to hold on to. I'm not going to take this thing down in bare metal. That's not necessary. Um, then I went back with a scotch brite pad, went in all the nooks and crannies and crevices um, all the way around the entire cabinet because if we're going to have paint flake off of this thing, it's going to be in one of these corners that I'm going to be grabbing at that isn't uh, properly scuffed. So went ahead and did all that and that's about all I'm going to take it tonight. Um, this weekend we're going to be hooking up the compressor, taking this thing outside and shooting this thing a nice bright toolbox red. All right guys, so it's now the weekend and we're ready to paint. Um, I've already moved the cabinet outside and I'm about to mix up my paint and get everything prepped. Um, but I am running low on daylight as you can see by the sunset filtering in behind me. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this up, walk outside, go ahead and shoot this thing and we'll come back and talk about the paint I chose afterwards. All right guys, so got my paint mixed up in the cup. Got about half a cup. I'm gonna see how far this gets me. I'm hoping to do two medium coats on this. Um, maybe a third if I think I need it. Throw a mask on and give this a try. Alright, so it's pretty cold outside, um, it took a while for that first layer to flash off, and it's only about 60 degrees, so it's, you know, it's taking a while, so got a full cup this time, um, got some on standby sitting over there, so hopefully going to hit this entire coat one more time, see if we can get rid of the orange peel, get the layout nice and flat, and uh, we'll go from there. Alright guys, so we just got done shooting the cabinet itself, now we're back in the garage. I have gone ahead and cleaned everything. It's important to try and clean your stuff as fast as you can before this paint dries on. It makes it much, much easier. So, I apologize. I wish I could have brought you more along with the mixing and, and getting everything prepped and everything like that, but the simple fact is it's pitch black outside and I just finished. So, you know, that's just part of painting in the winter time is cold weathers and not enough daylight. But actually turned out pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty stoked. So for all those who are going to ask um, what I actually shot. So the paint I used was, this is Magic Tractor Supply Tractor and Implement Paint. So you can find this brand of paint at um, Tractor Supply here in the southeast, um, ag centers, and any kind of farm um, and ranch kind of store that you may have near you. Most places in the U.S. have um, some kind of store like that. But this is the same stuff as Rust-Oleum, same stuff as Ace, Stop Rust. Um, I've had decent results with it. I shot this particular brand the first time the other day, and it came out really good. I was pumped with it. Um, to reduce it, I went with acetone. So after reading around online a whole bunch, um, what I pretty much figured out was you can reduce this with Magic's brand reducer, which is pretty expensive. Um, or acetone or mineral spirits um, paint thinner. Um, acetone goes off much faster, so you can kind of think of it as a fast reducer. Um, and then something like mineral spirits or paint thinner is going to be a little bit slower. Um, since it is cold today, I went with acetone. Then um, I've got a big old jug of lacquer thinner. I always keep it here. Always use it. This is what I use to clean up my guns, clean up my workstation, clean myself up. Um, then this is some uh, prep saw. So this is wax and grease remover. So I did go over the cabinet twice with wax and grease remover. This is a huge step um, if you're finding that your paint is not sticking and you're getting fish eyes. If you don't want those are, look them up. Um, you're not using this well enough. So that got two hits with it. Um, I laid everything on with the good old Harbor Freight purple power master um, of a spray gun. Um, this is mine. Just bought it. First time shooting with it. Um, my dad has one. I've shot with it three or four times. For what I do and for my experience level, this is great. I have a, a, a decent gun. Um, definitely middle of the range as far as price goes. Um, real gun. And I honestly can't tell a difference. But again, I'm not good enough to know a difference. So it lays on pretty nice. 
um, the key to all of this, um, I know a lot of you guys hate seeing Rust-Oleum projects and spray painting projects and that kind of stuff with this cheap, you know, farm and tractor paint, but the kicker is this stuff. This is a product by Magic. Um, a couple other companies make it, but this is Catalyst Hardener. This is what turns your Rust-Oleum paint into real paint. Um, this stuff is super nasty. Um, it makes it glossier, makes it harder, it also makes it cure faster. I hate spray paint Rust-Oleum because it takes weeks to dry. Um, with this stuff, it actually kicks off pretty stinking quick. Um, obviously, it's pretty cold tonight, but you know, by tomorrow, I'll be able to handle this stuff for sure um, and not worry about it too terribly much. So what I ended up with was using most of the court. If you see back here, I do have this much material left over. This is reduced with hardener and everything. So I could have probably gotten away with one more coat, but as cool as it's getting tonight and as dark as it's getting and as good as it looked, I decided to forgo that and go ahead and stop where I was. Okay guys, so it's windy outside, so I'm not sure if you ever hear me in that last clip. But here we are in the next morning, and we do have some issues. So late last night, probably about, well, probably about 1 or 2 in the morning, to be honest with you, we had fog roll in. Um, I did not pull this thing in the garage. Um, since I had it up on 4x4s four on the trailer, um, it just simply wasn't going to fit in the garage door, and I didn't have any way to strap it down to keep it from tipping as I drove to the yard and everything. So fog rolled in and ruined some of the finish. You can see down here, it's super glossy. It actually looks really nice, but up here on the front um, and all my other sides are completely flat. It pretty much ruined the finish on it. Um, it is hard, um, and I thought a lot about it. I um, thought about respraying it. I've got enough material that's already mixed up, and it's soon enough that I probably could get away with respraying it, or just trying to take this all off and try again. But I uh, went for the quick fix and I tried buffing out this finish. Got a test spot on the back side and it actually came out pretty stinking good. So what I think I'm going to do is touch up a couple spots that I messed up while moving it and just going ahead and buffing this entire thing. So, got a couple tricks to uh, make it appear to be an actual toolbox. And um, the first one is some auto parts store chrome. Okay, guys, so I've got two types of uh, chrome that I picked up at the uh, parts store. This first one is just an adhesive back strip, I guess it's like a trim ring or something. So I'm gonna do that on the back of this groove where you actually grab, um, go stick all that on there. This other type I have is like an edge trim. So it has just a little lip um, that you're able to slip on the edge of a car door or something like that. And then that we're going to put along this edge right here where you actually grab with your fingers. We're going to put that on there, and then we're going to put some uh, super glue back behind it so that it actually stays on. Alright, now that I have all the chrome put on, there's just one last piece. This might make some people upset, but you know what? I don't really care. I had this thing laying around. It's going to go on my filing cabinet.
Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you next time.